I hope all of you are doing well uh, and uh, staying safe. Thanks for joining the session. Uh, today, I'll just be walking you through what we do at Blue Ashwa, how we invest, uh, the themes that we look at, and the kind of portfolio companies that we have supported and plan to support. So um, let me just share our deck. Is this visible to everyone? Uh, okay, yes. great. Hi, hi everyone. Just to uh, give an intro, of, uh, I'll take this in four segments. One, I'll give you an intro of Blue Ashwa, uh, kind of what we stand for and what we're looking for. Second, I'll move into our investment thesis. Uh, third is going to be the investment themes that we invest in. And finally, close it out with giving you a glimpse of the kind of portfolio companies we have supported, uh, which may give you some context on the kind of companies that we want to work with. So to start off, uh, for Blue Ocean Capital, our main focus is unlocking the potential in entrepreneurs around the world. And we've identified three pillars to do this beyond capital, which every investment firm must bring. Uh, we've also identified technology and market linkage as two other pillars. Now on, on the capital front, it's especially in the areas that we are investing in, whether it's solving issues such as uh, climate change or healthcare or any of these, you, the in capital has to be patient and understand that there's a gestation period in the businesses that are being built. So patient capital is the first piece. Second is technology. We actually incubate technologies as part of our uh, program. And I'll get to that uh, piece in a bit. And the third aspect for us is market linkage to actually work with the portfolio companies and connect them to the market uh, in, in, in through our networks. Now, just to give you a, a kind of a, a background into the name of the fund, uh, Blue Ashra, Blue Horse, uh, it's kind of um, blue is the, the seeking of bold ideas, uh, while horse is the symbol of strength uh, and perseverance. Uh, so looking for blue horses, which in some sense are bold, but at the same time resilient and ready for the long run. And that represents the kind of businesses we're looking uh, to invest in as well. And we're looking to invest at the frontier of a better future with a combination of profit and purpose. So to really have scalable impact, the businesses have to be profitable and appeal to even mainstream investors. That's kind of the model that we follow. Now, in terms of investment thesis, we've broadly identified companies. We classify companies into two main buckets. One is the innovation-led companies. Here, where the USP is derived from proprietary technology, a lot of you may be working on uh, some game-changing uh, breakthrough innovations. Here, the kind of the way we look at the company, the way we invest is very different. Uh, where, of course, the technology being the defensible piece, it has to be uh, uh, novel. It has to be technically feasible and commercially attractive. And we would invest basis some milestones to basically de-risk it for you and us and work hand in hand to create wealth for everyone in the, in the initiative. On the execution led front, uh, this is where we are looking for businesses that actually it's, it's in some sense, the land grab where your, your scale and your traction is, is your defensibility. Uh, and here we're looking for founders that can build that great traction, have an understanding of the space. Uh, and we also have to plan for the total investment life cycle because just looking at one round is not sufficient. We need to know how many rounds of funding or how much funding is going to be required to get to that uh, critical point where, uh, uh, you know, company can actually sustain by itself and actually build a growing enterprise. Now, an interesting discovery that we had while we were working on this, uh, on the innovation led piece is we realized that there's actually a lot of innovators out there, scientists in labs, uh, in universities and corporate labs that have developed some technologies at the lab level, right? And these are really game changing if they were out in the market, but the sad reality is that a lot of these don't see a light at the end of the tunnel because maybe the investors or the market does not know how to value it. They don't have the know-how to understand the potential. So we've realized that this hidden or dark IP needs to be brought out. And what we've done is created a uh, sort of a, a bucket under Blue Ashwa, uh, Capital called Blue Ashwa Labs, which is our early stage deep tech uh, program where we actually take technologies from lab to pilot to commercial scale and spin it off into a company. So a lot of you who may be very early stage and are looking, uh, building hardware companies, deep tech companies, and you may not have many avenues uh, in the middle. You get lots of grant funding in the beginning and lots of VC funding later on, but that bridge in the middle is, is still uh, unexplored and that's what we're offering. So for this, we've actually partnered with various ecosystem. Of course, Vilgro is um, one of our partners who are trying to uh, get a lot of interesting companies through this route and see how we can support them. We've also partnered up with some international organizations such as the Maritime Port Authority of Singapore, uh, uh, which of course is, the, the, is focusing on marine decarbonization. We also partnered up with some universities, uh, some va various IITs, as well as uh, University of Haifa in Israel uh, and Ecolabs, which is under uh, Nanyang Technology University in Singapore. But the whole idea being to support these technologies and understand not only to establish a technical feasibility, but also the commercial viability of the idea and, and, and really put it out there in the world. Now, moving on to the second, uh, the third aspect of the presentation, the investment themes. 
So there are four broad themes that we look at. Food and agri is is one of our strongest focus areas. Here we're looking at both improving the farm productivity and making the food value chain more sustainable. So whether it's improving low yield or uh, reducing post harvest losses or increasing value realization of the farm end, we've identified some sub sectors that are of interest to us. But this is just one of a few of many uh, that we look at in the food and agri space. Uh, second piece uh, for us, again, a very strong focus is energy and environment. Here we're looking at decarbonization and circular economy technologies. So anything that's focusing on better resource utilization or decarbonization of the environment, we're very interested in. So some of the sectors we look at uh, agroforestry, so super crops such as bamboo or hemp, uh, to newer fuels such as hydrogen, uh, second generation biodiesel, so on and so forth, and also applications in energy storage and carbon capture and utilization. Third pillar for us is health and wellness. Uh, here we're looking at affordability, accessibility, and quality of care from everything from preventive uh, to reactive uh, medicine. So Ayurveda all the way to pharma APIs, med tech, uh, and consumables. And the final pillar for us is money and finance. Here we're looking at basically creating that uh, infrastructure for aspirational businesses and, and consumers to get access to capital. So whether it's lending, payments, insurance, wealth, or alt finance, we're investing across the board in these. So if you notice um, uh, with between food, environment, health, and money. In some sense, these are the foundational building blocks of a modern healthy society. And that's kind of how we've developed our thesis is to invest in these and channelize capital uh, into these important areas. Uh, and just to give you some uh, insight into the kind of companies we have supported, uh, we've invested everything from air pollution control technologies to battery cell technologies to biofuels and even some uh, technologies in drone manufacturing and, and dairy IoT. So as you'll see, these are you know all across the board and we're always looking for game-changing ideas operating in uh, working in these sectors uh, and support them with a combination of equity and debt. Uh, we've actually start, started exploring options of venture debt and even structured debt, uh, especially for hardware startups where they might struggle with investing into the equipment. We, uh, we've even done some models where we've allowed, we've freed up the company's balance sheets by doing an off-balance sheet financing. Uh, and on the Blue Ocean Labs portfolio, these are some of the technologies we're currently incubating. Uh, and if any of you are working in, in this space, you would ha be happy to have a conversation uh, with you and understand how we can support you. So everything from green hydrogen, ammonia, uh, to battery recycling technologies, and even pharma, uh, pharma grade uh, API technologies. So that's all I had. Uh, I'll open it up to questions. Uh, if there's anything uh, you would like to know about us, uh, how we invest, or how you can reach out to us, uh, please uh, uh, do ask. Thanks. Great. Uh, you can start by raising your hands and then maybe we could just like take it from there. Akshita, I have a couple of questions in the private chat. Can we begin with that? Sure, sure. Yeah. So Arpit, one of the questions is, uh, what is the preferred stage of enterprise and the ticket size you're looking at? Yeah. So uh, in terms of where we come in, we typically invest at a, a pre-series A or series A round. Now I know those terms are malleable these days, but uh, the kind of ticket size we look at is usually between one to $5 million. So we would come in uh, at a little, uh, I guess, on, on the advanced stage once there's some traction built. But having said that, our Blue Ocean Labs uh, effort is much earlier. They were looking at lab scale innovations even. So it depends on where you fit and, and uh, we would appropriately uh, look at the company that way. Um, I'll go with the next question. Um, can an independent innovator apply or does the partner expect a company to be incorporated? So uh, on the, on the Blue Ocean Labs front, we've actually even worked with innovators that do not have companies yet. In which case, what we actually do is we, we invite them over and say, okay, uh, show us your proof of concept, uh, at least on a lab scale. And then we work with them to set up a pilot unit. And once we feel that this is actually ready to be spun off, then we spin it off into a legal entity and bring the innovator along in the wealth creation journey, where we would actually build their enterprise, invite co-investors and build a company. So you don't have to be incorporated on the Blue Ocean Labs front. Uh, but of course, on the Blue Ocean Capital, if you're looking at deals, then of course, it has to be legal entity. Yeah, there's a question in the chat by Felix Raj, who asks, do you help in developing an idea on fintech? From what I understand, I think he's refer they are referring to a idea stage project. Uh, idea stage, typically, we would not look at. It's a little early. Uh, uh, at least, uh, you know, some kind of proof of concept uh, if you're talking on the labs front. But for a business, uh, uh, I think idea stage is a little early for us. So we would urge you to go out there, get some traction, and then, you know, happily connect with you. 
I'll come back to those who have raised their hands, but uh, I'll go with the question in the chat box first. Uh, Sujit Kumar Chakraborty asks, are you supporting for solar energy? What is the select uh, selection process for the sale? So solar energy, we have not focused on uh, for the simple reason that it's it's been a sector that's actually lots of investors globally have set up uh, funds for, and there's a lot of capital available in solar. Uh, and also solar projects uh, typically require a lot more capital available. And for us, we're focusing on, uh, I guess I would say the more nascent sectors in energy, whether it's uh, decarbonization or some of these recycling technologies um, or energy storage. Yeah. Uh, also, there's another question which asks if Blue Ashwa Capital is interested in agriculture uh, and agribusiness domain. Yes, we are definitely invested, uh, interested in, in agri uh, and agri agri tech, food and agri combination of even if you're working on food processing, health foods, uh, so on and so forth. And I'll also add one thing I forgot to add it in the presentation is we actually have a fund in India and a global fund out of Singapore. So we're able to actually co-invest uh, into global opportunities and bring capital from uh, from from a combination of funds as well. If that's relevant for international expansion to any for portfolio companies, uh, we always uh, look at co-investments. Yeah. Uh, I think, Nidesh, you can go ahead and ask your question. You've raised your hand, right? Yeah, yes. <clears throat> Thanks so much. Yesterday also we met on the IAP. This is the second time. Uh, really, it's a great job you're doing. Uh, I, I heard I just I missed a little bit five minutes uh, of that uh, conversation of Arpit uh, Sab. But I got that uh, you the you peoples are uh, supporting to the uh, to the early stage. Uh, say we are into the prototype stage. Uh, Wow. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Nilesh. Yeah. 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 So so we are ready with the, to help the agriculture sector, uh, supply chain management, and uh, export import into, into the maritime logistics. So one product that is a hexagon container we have made uh, specifically for the dry bulk cargo handling, which is totally globally unavailable, absence, zero presence of the as a uh, as a proper, uh, uh, you know, appropriate, proper uh, handling of the dry bulk cargo. Right now it is handled in the bags, gunny bags. What Sand stage are you bags. at, Nilesh? We have, I have made for already one 500 kg, half metric ton prototype ready at, at my office, uh, office, so, and, uh, office and residence, yeah. So, so what I would recommend, Nilesh, is uh, we would, you know, definitely take a look at it. And typically what we do is, uh, you know, uh, if a deal comes to us, we would even internally, we might decide if a deal comes to us uh, through the Blue Asia Capital route, but we decide it's a little early, we might, you know, even redirect you uh, uh, to the to the labs front. So what I would urge you to do is uh, definitely reach out. Uh, and uh, of course, you submitted an application on IPIT, so we'll find you and we'll be in touch and learn more. Yeah, so sir, uh, which mail ID can I have the mail ID so that I can uh, just the uh, I, I pitch team will, will send yeah. you the Nilesh will share the details on the chat. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Vishwas has raised his hand. You may ask your question. Vishwas, I think you are on mute. Kindly unmute yeah. him. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Vishwesh here. Uh, my question is basically, uh, we are working on energy efficiency uh, activities uh, yeah. to save electricity. And this is particularly on air conditioners, uh, bigger market. Uh, and uh, we are in MEP uh, stage, which is... Uh, MVP stage, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, supporting... Uh, so, uh, see, typically, uh, and uh, I'll clear this up for everyone. See, on, on the Blue Ashwa Labs initiative, we are looking for deep tech. So there we are not supporting early stage businesses that are developing, uh, let's say, products or software, so on and so forth. Here we're looking for uh, domains that really require lab infrastructure. We actually have physical labs that we've set up under Blue Ashwa Labs. You've got a lab in Singapore. We're setting up a center of excellence and lab in Mumbai. Where it's a it's a material science uh, lab with all access to chemicals and machinery for analysis of, of various kinds of products. So on deep tech is where we would support early stage. On everything else, we would basically come in at a pre uh, series A and series eleven. This is uh, based on IoT and big data analytics, uh, which we have incorporated. So. Sure, sure. So I think that that would actually fall into the the Blue Capital domain, where we would actually look at a at a pre series A or series eleven. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. So Arpit, there are a couple of questions. I'll begin. Um, so one question is uh, by Arnab. Uh, they ask, "Are you uh, is Blue Ashwa Capital interested in investing in gluten-free, gut-impacting foods and, veg and vegan milk sector?" 
uh, and the other one is by Aritra, who asks uh, if Loshwa Capital is interested in microfinance sector. So uh, on the first one, on the uh, vegan gluten-free piece, yes, we are looking at, uh, you know, businesses in this space, anything to do with uh, areas of protein, uh, alternative foods, uh, that's that's of interest to us. Um, so definitely do uh, reach out to us uh, if you're working on that. Uh, on the second, on the microfinance bit, um, it's, it's a space that our team does has worked in before it does understand right now it's not a key focus area uh, so we might not pick it up at this moment but uh, i think our thesis is always developing so it might be something that we focus on in the future yeah uh, there's another question which is application related are there any specific points which you would like the applicant to highlight in their application or uh, as to how to fine tune the application in terms of blue Ashwa capital that's a great question. I, I, I think what I would urge you to do is, is definitely share a story, um, uh, kind of your story of how you, what you were doing before this, what led you to start this. I think the, the why is a very important uh, piece of our analysis. We do like to understand what led the founder to uh, to start this journey. Um, on, on the other aspects, I think it's always important. Uh, I mean, for any, all the deals that we looked at till date, uh, having information that's ready to give to the investor for things like how much money you've raised in the past, uh, who you raised it from, at what valuation, if, if you have done uh, past fundraising, just uh, try and give as much information up front so that you cut down on the back and forth uh, later on. I think that would be my general feedback is as much information that you can provide up front that would be useful to the investor. Uh, uh, please do provide that up front, including traction details, the kind of customers you work with, uh, so on and so forth. Hello, uh, what kind of, what is your philosophy on the uh, businesses which are involved in activities like the vaccine development research and those kind of things? So that's actually, yeah, that would be on a, a, a deep tech focus in healthcare. Uh, we would definitely be interested to learn more about uh, what you're working on. There are some uh, sectors that we do not invest in. I should probably highlight that. Uh, we do not invest in uh, sectors dealing with alcohol, meat, uh, or anything uh, in these areas. So if you're working in that space, uh, we would not be able to fund you. That's just part of our mandate. Okay. I think such and, a... uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Vishwas. It's okay. I'll, I'll send them. Are you, are you going to give out the emails of the uh, email of the contact person over here or something? We've actually shared the details. Hello, of... Hi. Hi, Vishwas. So we've put yeah, the details in the hi. chat box. If you want to reach out to us, you can write to us at ipitch at willgrow.org. And if you want to apply to ipitch uh, and learn more about the kind of sectors that we're looking at, you can I've also shared the website um, page with you. So you can just have a look there. So Vishwas, just submit an application through yeah, ipitch and we'll be in touch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I think Sachin can go next. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is Sachin here. Uh, hi, Sachin. Question. Um, so we are a climate company working in agri sector as a primary. Okay. And uh, so we wanted to know if you guys have any experience in this uh, sector and probably learn from that experience to raise funds through you. Or You said uh, climate focused company in the agri sector, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, are you dealing with sustainable farming at the farm level or post? Yes. Harvest? Yes. Okay, so sustainable farming, farm management. Yes. Okay. So, um, we've we've looked at various businesses in this space. Uh, it's an area we've actually looked at combinations of uh, better ways of farming, uh, kind of uh, people working on uh, organic fertilizers and so forth, and even uh, mechanization at a farm level, agri-tech at the farm level, and even cold chain logistics beyond the harvest uh, ecosystem that can actually reduce the waste and, and reduce uh, um, uh, emissions and so on. But but to be honest, on, on a climate space on the agri front, we've actually, we're looking at opportunities where uh, you can actually hit two birds with one stone where, you, for example, you've got uh, a lot of crop residue burning uh, happening around the country. And if there's any utilization uh, for that, then you can actually make a, sort of a waste to value story. That's of strong interest to us. On a farm level, sustainability, um, it's something that we are, we're studying and we're happy to look at it. I think whatever you're working on, Sachin, definitely uh, uh, you know let us know. And uh, I think once we understand more, I'll be able to tell you if, if that's a space that uh, we would look at. Yeah. Perfect. So what's the best way to reach you? Submit it through iPitch, and uh, I think I'll have the the Wilgo team highlight highlight the application to me. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.
there's another uh, question in the chat box and another person who has raised their hand so we'll go with uh, saktivel i think i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly you may unmute yourself and ask your question hey hello yeah so arpi very good evening hi good evening yeah. we are uh, yali mobility and an incubated startup from idm madras who working in the space of inclusive mobility for wheelchair users basically we are making an electric three wheeler for wheelchair users which makes them daily commute lot more effortless and enjoyable by reducing the transfer from the wheelchair and there are so many hurdles involved in the day to day wheel uh, mobility issues faced by the wheelchair users so we making a indigenous vehicle where they can easily access with their wheelchair itself and they can drive without any dependency from the others so we we moved from a mvp stage and currently we are in alpha stage but also in a pre revenue stage so okay. uh, there is a slight difference between a, a alpha stage and a pre revenue stage as you sure. mentioned we are in a pre series a but it, you, you, including that we are in a pre revenue stage too. so is there uh, any consideration for that or do you have any concern in the, to highlight that so i would say two things uh, shaktivel one is on the industry and the focus the problem that you're solving um, we we're, we're definitely focused on ev mobility that's an area that we're interested in on on inclusive mobility it's not an area we've specifically studied i think that's a very uh, uh, niche area that you're developing on and we would probably have to learn from you on 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 what that uh, market looks like mm -hmm. um but happy to look at it i think the ev space is definitely something that we're focusing on on the stage of the business um, when i said when i said pre series a it's actually the round right before uh, your series a round so you just uh, it would still require some kind of attraction in the business uh, and the product market fit is achieved and, and you should looking to uh, get to a point where you can actually raise growth capital so uh, for a, a pre revenue company in this space typically we would not look at it but um, i'm happy to learn more because i mean it would be great learning for us on what uh, inclusive mobility in the ev space looks like so sure um, sure, sure yeah thank you thanks Yeah, so I'll combine the next question. Uh, yeah, there's a question asking if uh, Blue Ashwa Capital would be interested in encouraging in the development of deep tech product in mobility sector, and the other one is uh, if you support apparel's business, which is in the early revenue stage. Okay, so on the uh, deep tech, the, on the mobility front, uh, anything in the, in the deep tech space, uh, you know, we are we are keen to support. Uh, we truly believe that these kinds of businesses uh, need more investors that have the understanding of the technology and the market. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, we would like to learn what you're working on, uh, and then you know, see how we can support you on that front. Uh, on the apparel's business, uh, I would have to. Uh, i'll need more details because uh, while we would not look at an apparel business outright uh, we are looking at businesses that are working on um, sort of technical textile so something like um, uh, fi fabrics that are uh, disinfecting or have antimicrobial properties or any of these kinds of innovations in textile that's an area that we are looking at hope that answers the question um there's another question in the chat box by shri hari who asks that they are interested in the biochemical and vaccine development space in the idea stage how can i proceed uh, in the following sector so in, in this space um, ideas uh, stage would be um, i think uh, early for us uh, typically in this space if you have a proof of concept on a on a lab scale and you've seen you've seen the data come back and uh, on a smaller model you're seeing results and now you're wondering how do i actually build a business how do i scale this up and you need capital to build a pilot unit that's how you would come in so we would still need a lab level poc uh, uh, for us to uh, look at it from the deep tech incubation angle um, so on an idea stage on deep tech uh, is not something we would typically do um, so i think uh, probably need more details to uh, to make a longer comment i guess Arpit there's another question which asks apart from funding how does Bloshwa Capital support the portfolio companies Okay I think that's a that's a great question so as I mentioned uh, when we when we invest in a company there's a couple of things that we try and do one is when we're looking at um the when we're incubating early stage technologies in our labs program we try and cross pollinate that across the portfolio so you might be a company that's focused on one sector uh, but you might benefit from uh, a, you know a completely different technology um, to give you an example um, you know one of uh, like one of our, uh, our founder satya invested in this company a while ago which was a carbon capturing company uh, and uh, they they had one of the best technologies in carbon capturing uh, now when you look at carbon carbon capturing as a space even if theoretically we capture all the excess carbon in the atmosphere to decarbonize 
the market for CO2 itself is not quite as large as the annual emissions of CO2. So then we actually, the, the technologies that we're incubating in a lab, including hydrogen, uh, those happen to plug in great with carbon capture because you can then combine hydrogen with CO2 uh, to make products such as methanol, uh, which have a much larger market. So uh, so one is uh, beyond the capital, there's the technology cross-pollination. And finally, on the market linkage front, this is something that we're actually act very actively focusing on, which is we've developed partnerships with um, various universities and governments. So uh, we're actually one of the select uh, VCs working directly with the Singapore government. And the Singapore government is actually doing something very interesting where they want to be a test bed for deep tech uh, companies uh, because Singapore is in some sense is a model country. It's a very, it's a small country. A lot of things are controlled uh, and they want to be a test bed uh, for technologies like that. So we're working with them and to help you get access to markets uh, and, and, and kind of push your products through, particularly if you're trying to validate the technology and need access to a certain infrastructure, uh, we would definitely do that. And um, beyond that, on market linkage, we're always opening up our networks uh, to try and uh, you know get the, our portfolio companies access to whether it's customers or advisors or employees and help them on hiring, uh, so on and so forth. Thanks, Arpit. Um, so far, we are done with most of the questions. If you, any of you have any questions, please type in the chat box or you can even DM me privately. I will read them out or you may raise your hands. Yeah, we have last four minutes to go. So here's your chance. Yeah, we have a question. Uh, should the company be incorporated in India or are you open to those uh, incorporated outside India as well? We are open to those incorporated outside as well. Uh, so the way our, our fund is currently structured is our India fund is primarily to be deployed in India. Uh, but that's why we actually set up our global fund out of Singapore, which allows us to invest in the same themes, but at a global level. Uh, so there we're looking at, you know, uh, companies in US, Europe, um, you know, across the board, Southeast Asia, even uh, so, so that's the, okay, that uh, approach allows us to invest uh, across geographies. Yeah. Any more questions? Please type in the chat box. And if any of you are keen to learn more about us, you definitely check out our website. I think we've, uh, at least I think we've done a decent job explaining uh, our thesis and then why we're investing in what we're investing. So um, I hope that helps. Awesome, great. I think uh, if there are no more questions, uh, we can, oh, we got one, okay. Possible to support uh, CO2 removal concept projects. From yeah, happily, happily. I think uh, CO2 carbon capture and utilization is, is, a, is a very strong area uh, that we want to work on. So if you've got a technology that's focusing on this space, uh, we would definitely like to learn more. There's another question. Um, is there any support for psychological tools project? Uh, Arshad, I would have to learn more. I, I don't know how, uh, what exactly uh, you're working on. So maybe once I get more details, I can, I can comment. Arshad, would you like to unmute yourself and maybe explain quickly? Or you can also maybe apply it to iPitch and have your application form discovered by all the coalition partners. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for this time. Uh, I, I'm, am I audible? Yes, go ahead, Ash. Yeah, uh, actually, we, we are doing some cognitive uh, instruments, manufacturing and uh, testing and exercise tools, uh, which we be ordered for as it as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we, we completed that one, and now we are we have just we have just sent it to the market. And uh, I already have applied for the this IP as well. Uh, still waiting for your response. Uh, sure. So I just want to know that is there any uh, any yeah any anything that uh, you you, uh, uh, you plan for this, this type of uh, uh, you know uh, this type of project? Uh, so would, would you such type of things? That, that, that's okay. right. Thanks, thanks, Arshad. Would you classify this as uh, medical equipment, um, sort of med tech? Yes, uh, yeah. Actually, this for uh, we, we currently we done for concentration and uh, brain eye hand coordination testing apparatus. 
Current okay. most of them are doing with the questionnaireing. Uh, yeah, questionnaires are, that will take more than one hour. But uh, using our instrument, it will take only fifteen minutes um, um, maximum. Got it. Got it. And, Great. and so, if, so, if there is any 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 any, yeah. and if yeah. there, there is any deficiency we found, uh, we are we are we are giving some uh, uh, exercise tool that as well. That that will uh, that also we done some research and we we found some improvement that as well. So it's got also it, an effective it. method. So, so I think it's something that uh, um, it, I guess would fall into the med tech domain. And uh, I think once I learn more, I'll I'll, I'll be on the watch out uh, for your application, Arshad. Then I'll I guess I'll learn more once I uh, once I see the application. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you. One, thank you very much. Yeah. One more question. Uh, uh, collaborating with the Canadian startup ecosystem. Okay. Uh, hi, hi, Natarajan. Uh, so uh, we haven't directly. Uh, set up any partnerships with the, the Canadian ecosystem. Um, but if you know folks uh, that, that you know, are working in the same space, definitely do let us know. We're always looking to expand our network. Um, I think uh, Canada, of course, is, a, is a quite a vibrant uh, place, uh, you know, regarding, you know, all the companies that are being built there. So we're not directly focusing uh, on, on networks in Canada, but if you do know someone, please let us know. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Antarjan. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I think we're, uh, we've reached our time. Uh, thank you so much, Arpit, for doing this, for taking the time to uh, speak to all the entrepreneurs. This was really useful. And I'm sure all the entrepreneurs here would be now have a better idea on, you know, uh, the kind of why they should be applying to iPitch. So, yeah, thank you so much. And thank, thank you, everyone, you. for joining. Thank this you, everyone. Thank you. So thanks, much. Everyone. thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank Looking forward to seeing all your applications. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. So Thanks, thanks, Abhi. Thanks, everyone. Do apply for our pitch. Best of luck. Thank you.